Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our Easter worship service. I especially want to express a welcome to any of you and all visitors. I had a good experience today, and we should all come back. The senior nights have an announcement for us. The senior high youth would like to thank everyone who supported this morning's Easter breakfast in donations, volunteering, and attending. We hope you enjoyed it, and as a way of thanking everyone for their support of our small group, this year's donations will be split between our mission trip and our Trinity breakfast program. If you feel moved to support our mission trip to St. Louis, Missouri, working with the Emmaus, Holmes, and other ways, we welcome your t-shirt sponsorship and remind you that our Vehicle 100% fundraiser is nearing its end. We still have many envelopes available. Using these envelopes and raffle tickets, we are gathering some fun information. We know some of your ages, the years you graduated, and even Doug Henshaw High School football jersey number. Be creative and pick a number. Thank you for your continued generosity.
Please join me in our worship. As you are able, will you please rise? And the whole text is your part. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In God's great mercy, we have been given a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Christ is risen indeed. Jesus has come that we may have life and have it to the fullest. Christ is risen indeed. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Christ is risen indeed. God raised Christ from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
Please join me in our gathering prayer. Thank you, dear Christopher God, for your love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for your joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice in the name of our own. Give us the gifts of oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God appeared long ago to the faithful. God appeared and is appearing because God shows no partiality and because God settled love to this world. Please take a moment to walk a word of welcome to one another on this special Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome, 
bought spices so that they might go to the <coughs> And very early on the third day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us when they enter the city of Jerusalem? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But the disciples and here. And he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Then he went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And he said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. <coughs> So I'm trying to have a, a kind of a word picture for you about uh, Resurrection Sunday, about Easter Sunday. Uh, and the thought came to me uh, to talk about a little baby. Now, uh, I, I was amazed when my first son was born and how responsive a little baby is when they're born. Uh, and you'll realize that uh, becoming a parent makes you someone different. It changes you. Uh, and you begin to see things in your children. And you begin to realize that there is transformation in the world. Amazing transformation. Now, a little baby, if you've seen one, uh, kind of stretched their heads out. I was amazed even at just when they were born. Just into the world. They were looking around like this. They are listening to the sounds and light. They're, they're uh, feeling for another presence there with them, and that's a life-changing moment when a baby is born, because the one thing they do is they reach out for connection, and they try to find comfort, and I hope that you keep that image of a little baby in mind when you think about what we're doing here today on Easter Sunday. We're just like that little baby. We're just stretching our necks and we're reaching out and we're yearning for that graceful, uh, giving presence that we find in the universe. We're trying to interpret the sounds and listen to the stories, but in all that searching today, we are innocent. Do you ever notice the paintings of uh, angels a lot of times? They're little cherubs, right? It's a little baby with little angel wings flying around because they're innocent. And we are very different as we continue through life. And on Easter morning, we're stretching ourselves to find the light of God's love. It's an instinct. It's an instinct to reach out. It's an instinct to trust. And we know how much babies thrive when they have connection and stimulation and safety. We also need to realize how much we strive when we have connection and when we have grace in our life. It's an instinct. Now I can tell you from the beginning of human time, people have yearned for certain questions. What kind of a universe do we live in? Is this universe that we live in hostile, or is it gracious? We all have that instinct to reach out and in sincerity, genuine sincerity, to answer these important questions that are the foundation of our life. So I also want to tell you today that we live in a world where Hallmark owns Easter.com. No kidding. Look it up. Google it. Easter.com, close to the Hallmark site. 
Recently, uh, I got I, I broke down and I got one of those Amazon Alexas. How many of you have an Alexa? You guys have that? Talk, talk to you in the morning. It's always good to have to talk to you, right? And so, you know, I'm kind of learning uh, how to use it. And this morning, I got up and I said, Alexa, what holiday is this? And the response that I got was, this is not a federal holiday. <laughs> And I thought, okay, I'm going to try it again. Alexa, what religious holiday is this? This is not a federal holiday. And I never could get through to Easter. But you can try this uh, on yours. Maybe mine was just playing games with me this morning, but I don't think so. I think that's the way they're programmed. So I found that uh, artificial intelligence is good to find out what the score in a baseball game was but not very good to find out the meaning of life. <laughs> and after our Good Friday service, we went through the passion of Jesus and the different scenes along the way, and I began to think about um, two scenes. The first is a scene where Jesus is on the cross, and he looks down and he sees the disciple, John, his good friend, and his own mother, Mary, standing at the cross. And Jesus, in those moments, asks John to watch over his own mother for him. He says, Behold your mother. He says, Woman, behold your son. And Jesus had a different view of how we ought to live on this earth. A different view of what it means to be family. And the second scene that I noticed this year was the scene about the burial of Jesus, where Joseph of Arimathea offers to have Jesus' body placed in a tomb in his own family cemetery and burial ground. And it said about Joseph of Arimathea, he was a man who was yearning for the kingdom of God. He was stretching out and trying to find that presence that we all have an instinct to search for. Now, how strange must it have been for Joseph's family to explain why this stranger was buried in their family plot? Because Jesus contradicts the way that we see the world. He was always up and about connecting people. Because that's what transformed people do. They see the world differently. So today I want to also give you a future sermon alert. Okay, this is kind of like a preview. But I, 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 I kind of work on sermons as I go along and I get different ideas and I kind of uh, embellish them. And, you know, it's a little richer after you think about things for a while. And I've got this sermon in an opera. And uh, it's about how... Uh, horror movie genres uh, have really expanded in the last 30 years. Now, you can think about that in your own experience. There are a lot of horror movies out there. It used to be kind of like a sideline, but now that's a prominent theme uh, in, uh, in movie theaters is horror movies. And so, uh, you know, after the recent uh, miniseries, uh, zombies are the primary uh, form of uh, monsters in those monster movies. And I think that zombies are such a prominent genre today because many people already are zombies. Because they have their head down, they're trudging through life without thinking, just responding to the latest thing that they can consume. And they have numbered themselves. They have numbed themselves so that they don't have to feel the pain of being alive. Think about it. How many of us are on autopilot? How many of us are not conscious of the things that happen around us? How many of us don't question why things happen? How many of us are not yearning for the presence of God? The great psychiatrist Carl Jung said that the goal of the spiritual life is to always become more conscious. 
So today, Jesus is risen. Yes. But the question is, have you risen to a new life? Sometimes I talk about practicing resurrection, and that is helping people who have been numb to the world or people who have been mistreated by the world and they've given up hope and they have their head down uh, and they're not paying attention to life, they're not being mindful. Um, who can you practice resurrection with? And I'm sure you can think of someone who fits that description. And sometimes I'll ask people uh, a question, and we learned this through trauma, is when did you lose your soul? When did you, you lose that innocence of yearning? When, when was it that you gave up? And in our story today, we have a God that's always present. Matter of fact, isn't that what Jesus said when he was resurrected? I will be with you always. And in the season of Lent, when we began many weeks ago, we promised that we would have an intentional time when we struggle against everything that leads us away from the love of God and neighbor. It's really pretty simple, but our lives are enhanced by being connected to God and being connected to other people. And a few of us here today know that we've been resurrected above our circumstances, above our situations, above our crisis, above some dilemma that we have. And there are a few of us here that know that the power of resurrection in our lives is possible. We don't know how we got into these things, but we know we got out of them. And in this world, this world of greed and anxiety and self-interest and domination and despair and trials and shaming and blaming, we're inviting you to come over to a different world. We're inviting you to come over to the world of truth-telling, a world of abundance when we share, a world of trust, a world of grace, a world of community. And we believe that this way of being in the world is more satisfying. It's a way that is more adequate, a way that's more helpful. And we're not going to molder in our graves of failure or shame or guilt. And we're not going to live these skeptical, cynical, judgmental lives anymore. We're going to join the company of people who believe in the gospel. And we have no doubt that this life is far more satisfying. So, in conclusion, in the resurrection, now we're not talking about some philosophical system or argument. We're, we're not talking about uh, some scientific argument here about resurrections and how they happen. We're talking about how we live in the world differently. Because in case you haven't noticed, in many places the world is stuck. And there are many people in the midst of their life who are stuck. And what we suffer from is a lack of imagination. We're stuck in a time when we don't trust our truest instincts. We don't believe that the world can be different. And worse, we don't believe that our lives can be different. So what Jesus did was he laid out for us a different way to see the world, to live in the world, to no longer be known, to no longer be inhumane or inhuman, but to be humane. And in a world of violence and domination, we as people of conscience live out of an alternative way of being in the world, in the light of the cross, in love, and in trust. So come on over to this world of trust, this world of hope, this world of love. And you'll notice in our, our uh, scripture today, 
that uh, I pulled out those words from verse 7. Go tell. Be like a little baby. Have that image in your head today for Easter Sunday. That little baby, when they're born, they're kind of reaching out, and they want a connection with their parents. We also, on Easter Sunday, need to have that same instinct, that yearning of Joseph there in the field. We stretch our hearts and our minds, and we know that that is a real part of us. You'll notice today, too, there's a lot of controversy about the Gospel of Mark ending with the women not telling anybody after they've been told, go and tell. Verse 8, so they went out, they fled from the tomb in terror and amazement, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. So Mark knew that he couldn't get you to believe in the resurrection. So Mark left this story open-ended because that's where your instincts begin. For you to make a decision, for you to raise up your head and look around and make a connection with God and realize how important that is. Because the only place that you will find that truth is in your heart. Amen. As we continue with our Easter worship today and start to prepare our offering, we, we are rejoicing in the knowledge that Christ is risen, and we want to share our joy with those around us and practice resurrection with those who need it. Our gifts are a way for others to see God's light and love showing up in the world. Let us now prepare our offering. <laughs>
Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 